Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. So welcome and happy new year. Welcome to 2024. Um, today that I'm filming this is Thursday the 4th of January. I'm not entirely sure exactly when this video is going to come out. Hopefully today or tomorrow, not too long. Um, before we jump into it, this is going to be a Christmas slash Black Friday slash end of 2023 sort of haul video. Um, I want it to be a haul and swatching, but I may have to split it into two videos just because there's a lot of stuff. So we'll see how we get on. But before we get into this, I wanted to kind of jump in with a little bit of an update slash some health news, etc. Um, <laughs> I've had a really rough December. I will be honest, December was a really rough month for me. Um, normally I love December, we had a great time, but from around mid-December I started getting really ill. And then uh, the week before Christmas I had flu, uh, so that was fun. Um, <laughs> I had a really bad flu for a few days and then as that started improving my flu turned into sinusitis. And then once that started improving I developed an ear infection in one ear that then spread to the other ear that became a double infection. I ended up having a middle ear and an outer ear infection in both ears at the same time, which then led to perforated eardrums on both sides. So I am now essentially deaf. I can hear very little. Um, everything sounds very muffled. Even when I'm talking, my own voice sounds really muffled and I have a constant ringing in my ear and intense pain in my jaws which thankfully the painkillers the doctors have given me are helping um the infection is now pretty much cleared up the antibiotics are working but doctors have told me it's going to take about four to six weeks for my uh eardrums to heal completely and for my hearing to come back to normal so all of this to say i have um four videos already prepared and ready to go continuing in my colour comparison series that I've been doing but other than those four and this video I don't have any other content already pre-filmed and I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to be filming over the next few weeks whilst I'm still healing. As it is I <laughs> need you to uh, bear with me with this video. I hope the sound quality will be okay, that the volume will be okay. I probably won't be overlaying any music. Um, so if there are any quiet patches and stuff, I'm sorry. Only because I don't, I, I'm not gonna be able to hear very well when I'm editing. So like I said, hopefully it'll be okay. I'm gonna be trying to edit out any sniffles and stuff as we go along. But again, if I miss a few, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, this video, hopefully the audio quality or audio won't be too bad compared to my other videos. I don't use like a separate mic or anything, but more just in terms of, I, I do tend to adjust the volume as, as I go with the editing, depending on how loud certain clips are compared to others. So it's sort of sounds the same level throughout. Um, but I'm not sure how well that's going to work out this time. So like I said, please bear with me if the audio is a little bit not as great as usual and um and yeah so I have really no concept of how loudly I'm talking or uh anything like that so <laughs> honestly it is it has been a really really difficult few weeks um it's only really been in the last couple days I actually was back to see the doctor again yesterday and uh, they said the antibiotics have finally kicked in the infection seems to be pretty much gone so now we're just dealing with the repercussions of the infection and the perforated eardrums and just waiting for that to heal so at this point it's just a matter of dealing with the pain keeping on top of my eardrops and my painkillers and all of that until things um heal um so like i said i have lots of plans for 2024 but i don't know necessarily how soon i'll be able to get new content out once the videos i already have um are uploaded i'm hoping to be able to get back to it by the end of january but we'll have to see how things go um i just wanted to give you guys the heads up give you that information before we jump into all of this i will try and have links to everything in the description box down below if there's anything that i haven't linked that you're trying to find um please leave me a comment i'll get back to you as soon as i can with a link 
um, and in that vein, <laughs> please like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave me a comment, let me know what's your favourite thing in the haul. Um, also, I'm planning on doing separate videos for a lot of these things. Um, and I'll explain those as we go along but if there's anything in particular that I'm sharing today that you really want to see a review of want to see a video about or anything like that please do let me know so I can make sure to prioritize that going forward when I do finally get to filming <laughs> certain things okay let's jump into it so like I said this is a combined Christmas slash Black Friday slash end of 2023 haul videos so there's things that I've picked up over time mostly from Black Friday and or Christmas related stuff so um I'm just trying to think okay so basically if I move these over here this this little pile here is all Christmas and the rest is stuff I've purchased myself um so let's just start here we have the set of Stabilo woodies in the pastel colours. These came out fairly recently. I do have, a, not all, but most of the other colours um, of the woodies. So I wanted to add the pastels to the ones I already have. So we will swatch these out later. Then I also picked up, I believe Jackson's were having a sale on Holbein stuff. And so I picked up a selection of their coloured pencils. I have the quote-unquote knockoff dupe versions of these, which are the Brute Funa pencils, like their pastel pencils. Uh, the Brute Funa 50 pastel pencils are supposed to be a dupe for the Holbein pastel pencils. And I've compared some of the ones where I have similar colours, and they are fairly close. Um, but the Holbein ones are just really buttery and lovely to work with. So, like I said, I have a selection of those. I have 16 colour pencils from the Holbein collection. So we will take a look at these as well. Then this is something I picked up a while ago and I'm not sure if I'm going to swatch them out in this video because I've already done swatches off camera which I'll show you in a second. But this is 15 of the White Knight's um, granulating colours, like their version of the super granulating colours they came out with. This isn't that all the ones that they have, this is just 15 of them. And I'll show you, these are the swatches I did and I believe this was on, yeah, this is on 100% cotton paper. So you can see the different granulations. I'll hold it up on screen, so if you want to pause and take a look at the names and the pigment information, you can. Um, but I'm planning on doing a video where I swatch out all of my White Knights colours anyway. And so I'll include this in that video and talk a bit more about the brand there. Um, so that's those. I purchased these on AliExpress. So I'm not sure how easily I'll be able to find a link for these because those sorts of things kind of come and go and they're not always available. But if I can find the link, I'll try and include one. And these three things I picked up from Amazon. This first one is a 100% cotton sketchbook, apparently. It's by this brand, um, Tumu Tumuata. Tumuata watercolor sketchbook. And it says 100% cotton, cold pressed, acid free all the good things and I've seen their sketchbooks before but I've seen the ones that are I think they're 50% cotton or they've got some they've got like a mix it's like a blend um but I saw this one pop up and I thought it was interesting it's 140 pound paper so 300 gsm and it's seven and a half by five inches 24 sheets interesting thing about it the elastic comes off completely it's not attached on the back uh, it's got this exposed spine which I think is quite nice it's covered in fabric but it's kind of got that sort of exposed um, spine effect and the paper is definitely dual sided I don't know if you can see if you can see the texture that looks to be the front and then you can see the texture is a bit smoother on the back side of the paper you, I think you can see the difference between the two sides here so it'll be interesting to try this out and I might do some of the swatching on this paper to just kind of test it out and see what it's like but it was fairly inexpensive. I think it was around 14, 15 pounds on Amazon and it wasn't on sale at the time that I got it. So for 100% cotton, if it's and 300 GSM paper, if it's a decent uh, quality, that could be a really good sketchbook option for 100% cotton. 
And in the same veins of cheap sketchbooks, this is an Amazon own brand, it's the Amazon Basics um, watercolor sketchbook. It was incredibly inexpensive. It's not cotton. I can't remember what the GSM is for the paper, but it's not 140 pounds. It's, it's okay. It's fairly thin, but it's kind of to be expected for sketchbook paper. It's probably a little bit thinner than say um, moleskin sketchbooks. Yeah. And it's supposedly watercolor paper. Again, it's dual sided. You're not gonna see this as well on camera, but this is the back side. It's a lot smoother and the front side has more texture. I don't think you're gonna see that. It's not as textured as the other one I just showed you. But this was literally, I think it was less than four pounds on Amazon. So I thought, you know what? For an inexpensive sketchbook, watercolor sketchbook as well, is actually designed for watercolors. So we'll see about that. I'll definitely test this one out today and we'll see how it is. Even if it is complete rubbish and unusable as a watercolor sketchbook, I'll use it for either other mediums, mixed media, or maybe even as just like a swatching sketchbook. Sometimes I want to do something, I want to paint something, but I have no energy to come up with an actual idea of what to paint. So I just like to sit and swatch some of my colors. So I might use this for that purpose if it's no good as an actual watercolor sketchbook, but we will, we will test that out and see. And then the other one I got, which I have high hopes for, because I've heard really good things about these sketchbooks is the Claire Fontaine paint on mixed media sketchbook. This is a 200 GSM, 64 pages, 19 by 19 centimeters or seven and a half by seven and a half inches 64 pages 32 sheets this one has some um tooth to the paper so this one is with grain there's one that has a red cover which is smoother and this one let me take the band off belly band off i just love like the it's got that sort of soft cover feel um it's like a velvety feel, but it's not velvet. I don't know how to describe it. And I like the embossed paint on logo at the bottom. You get a line from the elastic, which is not a big deal, but the paper is bright white. And again, you can see that texture there. Again, it's dual sided. This side is clearly the back side because it's a lot smoother. Let's see if I can get a bit, I don't know, look, they look pretty similar on screen, but in real life, this side is smoother than this side. So this paper again does have a front and back but that's not a problem, most papers do. Um, but even the back side is slightly textured, not as textured as the front side. So again, it'll be interesting to see what this is like. What's that? Oh, it's a quality control thing, that's good to know. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this one out at some point as well, oh, here we go. Here's some of the other options they have. So I have this one, which is the blue with grain. You have the white, which is just the red one. That's quite a smooth one. You have a natural gray and black as well. So I'm guessing that's just the colors of paper with thin. So this is uh, extra white paper with grain, it seems to be. Yeah, extra white paper with a pronounced grain. All right. Moving on to the paints that I've bought myself. I have picked up some My Merry Blue tubes. I already had the Ultramarine Deep, which is PB29. I already had this one, but I picked up, but well, these were on sale as well on Jackson's, I believe. I can't remember now. Um, I've got Fiance Blue, which is their Indan Throne, so it's PB60. Ironically, this one, so ironically, funnily enough, this one doesn't actually have the pigment information on the tube, but I know that one from having checked the website. Then we have Hooker's Green, which is PG-17. I don't normally go for a Hooker's Green, but because it's PG-17, I know it's not going to be like a typical Hooker's Green. Then Cobalt Green, PG-26. Uh, we have Sandal Red, which is PR-254. And then we also have Gamboge Hue, which is PY139. Again, not a pigment I see very often, so I was interested to try that one. So we will swatch these out. I also picked up a few more Roma Schmall colors. So I got a uh, Sap Green Light.
So I've got Sap Green Light. Their new limited edition colour called October 2023. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to keep the focus in place. Then we have their Indanthrene Blue. When I was doing the colour comparison series for the, I think it was, was it Paints Grays or Indigos? Indigos. I noticed the Roma Schmall Indigo was made with um, Indanthrene Blue and, and a black pigment, I believe. And I really liked it, so I thought I'd just get their Indigo, uh, their Indanthrene, I mean. And then we also have the um, Azo Yellow. This is PY128, so I thought I'd try that one out. And then the last two colours I got were Perylene Green and Cobalt Violet Light. Yeah, I had some questions, some comments on some of my previous colour comparison videos asking for comparisons of these colours and I didn't have them in Roma Schmoll so I thought I would throw them in when they were on sale and try those out as well so I could also include them in the comparison videos. And then finally, I believe I got these from, where did I get these from? Is it Arta Miranda or another U U UK website? I can't remember. I, I know Jackson's has recently started stocking Rosa Gallery paints, which is amazing. However, they don't have the latest release of these granulating colours at the moment. So I know I didn't purchase them from Jackson's. I just can't remember which website I did purchase them from, but I will include a link to somewhere you can get them. It's either Arta Miranda or Ken Bromley in the UK. Arta Miranda is based in Spain, Ken Bromley are UK based, but I know both of them sell these paints, so. Um, we, I got Azure Green, Magenta Grey, Cobalt Grey, Violet Black, Jade Green, Golden Brown and Maroon Brown. There are a couple of others in this newer release, but these were the ones I wanted, so I only got the seven I was interested in. So pop these down here. And then we will move on to my Christmas gifts, I guess which funnily enough I kind of also purchased for myself I just my husband's clueless when it comes to art supplies which is absolutely fine I don't expect anyone to know about art supplies who aren't artists if that makes sense so I either send people a link to something I want or I ask for gift vouchers to Jackson's or Amazon or in the case of my fat my husband I will just purchase the thing and then hand it to him to wrap for me so which is absolutely fine. I personally, I mean, the reason why I haven't made an artist gift guide video for the last couple of years is quite honestly, I feel like the best thing you can buy an artist is something that they've requested because there are so many things out there and it's just so easy to get something that either they already have or they're not interested in. So I find it a bit hard to make a gift guide video when my personal philosophy on the situation is either don't buy me art supplies or if you're going to buy me art supplies buy something I've asked for or give me a gift voucher to an art shop that I enjoy shopping at like genuinely I think that's the best way and the least likely to be a waste of money for the person purchasing a gift so and I know it's more about like the thought behind it but at the same time art supplies are expensive and I don't want people putting their money towards something that I'm never going to use so like I said I'd rather you ask me what I want or just get me a gift voucher. Personally, that's just my philosophy on it and that's what I do with my family. So either I give them a link for something or gift vouchers. Um, and in that vein, I got a gift voucher from my parents. <laughs> so that's not included here. But from my husband, I have some Da Vinci stuff because Da Vinci were having an amazing Black Friday deal. And so I purchased some stuff from them in their Black Friday sale and handed it to my husband and he's now given it to me for Christmas. So in here we have three tubes of their gouache which comes in these massive tubes. These massive 37 milliliter tubes I believe. Are they 37 mils? What does it say? Yeah 37 mil tubes. So we have titanium white, um, Payne's grey and Elizabeth and crimson. I try to go for colours I don't already have in gouache um, other than the white obviously but you always need more white. Uh, Elizabeth Crimson I do have in the Shinhan Pass which is like a watercolour gouache hybrid 
and I also have it in the Winsor & Newton but that one dries really crumbly so I wanted to see what the Da Vinci one was like and these are very affordable for gouache as well so I'm really interested in trying these out and then for watercolours if you follow me you already know I have a decent collection of Da Vinci paints now because last time they had a big sale I purchased some as a treat to myself um, so I've added another bunch of colours here so, okay. let's just put them down we've got Aralide Yellow uh, Soul Shine which is a custom mix so that would be interesting to try Hansa Yellow Medium Nickel Azo Yellow for the yellows then for the reds I got Da Vinci Red Permanent Rose Quinacridone I, I had I think I had their Rose Matter Quinacridone so I wanted to try their Permanent Rose which is more like a Quinacridone Rose type colour um, Opus Vivid Pink which is their Opera uh, Rose Dore Quinacridone and then Sea Glass Indenthrine Blue uh, Cobalt Blue and Prussian Blue and then also Joyce's Mother Green so that looked like a nice sort of olivey green colour so we tried that and then when you purchase a certain amount you also got a free uh, like thank you gift and these include I think two colours that they two new colours so I think the one that they already have that's not new is the Thalo Turquoise which is a PB15 PB16 um, but their new colours are Perylene Red, which is PR149. I haven't done all the pigment information. I'll do that when we're swatching. So that's the Perylene Red. And then their new gold, which I believe is their replacement for Quinacridone Gold because of the PO48 and PR206 pigments going out of stock. I can't remember which one they use in their mixture or in their old mixture, but this is the new gold. And this uses... PY83 and PR101 so it'll be interesting to try this out and compare it to some of my other quinacridone golds and see how it stacks up so those are the new da Vinci paints that we're gonna have to try out it's like I said a lot of paint so I may have to do one or two separate swatching videos we'll have to see um, one of the Jackson's orders I placed in the last couple of months came with a free set of fine liners so I just added that to the stuff I gave my husband to give to me for Christmas um, and it comes in nib sizes 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 so a nice range of nib sizes you can always do with more fine liners uh, and the last thing my husband gave me was a new Etcher sketchbook in the B5 portrait format I absolutely love this I use I had one and I used it up and I really enjoyed it so when they went on sale on Jackson's I purchased well yeah on behalf of my husband I purchased another one for myself for Christmas and then lastly I have the gift from my parents-in-law and they again requested that I send them some links to some stuff so I did and these are the two things they got me they got me a Daniel Smith uh, 266 color swatching sheet so this includes all their watercolors I think it includes some of the newer ones as well but it also includes the current range of gouache in dot card form as well which I thought was really interesting and I've only got two of their watercolor uh, so two of their gouache colors so it'd be interesting to try out there are the other gouache colours and there's definitely more of the watercolours included in these sets a lot of the new ones like McCracken Black Black Red Green uh, Black Blue Orange some of these are new they weren't on the original dot cards that I've tried before so I think this includes the full full range and most of these dots are actually fairly decent size I mean some are pretty meagre but overall, I feel like this dot card set has much better sort of um, quantity of paint on the actual dots. Oh, and it comes with a little Daniel Smith sticker. That's nice. I didn't notice that. Um, so yeah, at some point, I'm planning on doing a Daniel Smith Swatch With Me video. 
I know I, d I just recently did my uh, Daniel Smith collection swatch with me, but this will be the full collection, including the gouache, and I'll probably split it into a few videos so it's not too, too long as one video. Um, but yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in that. And the other thing they got me, which was, again, something I'd requested because of something I was planning on doing. Get this back into the bag, that'd be great. There we go. The other thing I requested from Ken Bromley was their watercolour paper mini starter pack. And this includes 25 sheets of a range of different watercolours, papers. So it includes papers from, and it's got all the details here, and the papers are actually numbered in the top corner in pencil very lightly, so you know which ones are which, which is great. Um, it includes paper from Bockingford, Fabriano 5, which is the 50% cotton paper, Arches, or Arsh, Saunders Waterford, Saunders Waterford High White, which is the same as Saunders Waterford, 100% cotton, but with a optical brightener. Milford, which is also from Saunders Waterford. De La Rowney Langton paper, which is their non-cotton paper, wood pulp paper, um, yeah, cellulose paper. Winsor Newton Classic paper, which is also cellulose. Botanical Ultra Smooth, which is another sub brand from Saunders Waterford it's a 50% cotton super smooth like hot press paper uh, Fabriano Artistico which is 100% cotton Ken Bromley's own practice paper which is 25% cotton and then the Strathmore 300 series watercolour paper so other than Saunders Waterford and Arches and Bockingford and Fabriano Artistico and again for all of those only in the cold press I've not really tried any of the other papers so it's interesting and even for the Arsh, Saunders, Waterford and Fabriano it'd be nice to try out their hot press and the rough as well as the cold press or not. Um, it's great because it also comes with other inf a whole bunch of other information about papers and sizing and all that size uh, types of stuff. I have a few other sample packs. I have one from Hannah Muller with a range of their papers and I have a few other types of papers so what I'm planning again hoping to do over the course of this year is a watercolour paper comparison series as well comparing various cellulose papers, various cotton cellulose mixed papers and then 100% cotton papers and then I will also, I'm probably going to stick mostly with cold press because that's mostly what I paint on but then maybe I'll do a, a video on like some of the hot press and rough papers as well. Um, so that'll be a little colour series or comparison series on papers coming up. I really enjoyed doing the colour comparison series, so I thought maybe doing a paper comparison series as well would be really interesting and useful for some people. Um, so yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in that and which kind of papers you'd like to see included, other than the ones I've mentioned here. If there are any others you'd like to see included, make sure to let me know. Um, I'm trying to think what else... So there's that, there's the swatching series, there's obviously all of this stuff. Um, so anything you'd like to see a more detailed review on, please let me know in the comments section below. And yeah, I think I'm going to end this video here and I'll come back and we'll do some swatching of um, the paints and the pencils and stuff as well. We'll save this for a separate video. Come back for part two.